Paul McCartney, famous of course for his pop success with the Beatles, realised yet another dream today when his old school was officially reopened for business, show business. He joined 200 students and supporters of the brand new Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts. I went along too. It was Beatlemania revisited as Paul McCartney entered his old school gate. The building, which had fallen derelict, sparked McCartney's idea back in the early 80s to build a fame school where students of all ages could learn all about all aspects of the entertainment industry. Students from all over the world and from the Northwest are already studying here. Today was the first time everyone concerned with the building of an institution that's generated worldwide interest had come together. The media were packed into one gallery theatre while the presentation, including a speech from Paul McCartney, went on in a neighbouring auditorium. Afterwards, Paul McCartney himself spoke about the project. It's not that we're trying to teach them to write songs. Hopefully they'll do that themselves. They'll have the talent. We're hoping to nurture it, give them some management skills, show them other sides of the industry. I think you can teach that. So we're hoping that we've created something different here. The kids themselves are the ones who are going to have the talent. We can't inject them with talent. The project has received support from far and wide, even from the Queen. McCartney, who has referred to himself as a scruff from Speak, was asked what it was like now to have royal approval. I always think of her uh, as a very sensible person, Your Majesty. Um, <laughs> down to the bloody tower now. Um, I think, you know, she's a great figurehead, and I'm very proud that she's uh, donated to the school and is coming in June to the official opening. After the press conference, Paul McCartney went to meet some of the students. Behind me, there's a post-press conference debriefing for the Norwegian contingent of the 200 students here already. Let's find out what they thought of Paul McCartney. I thought it was cool. I enjoyed it. It was really exciting. It was, and I was like, wow, I, I, do, I do know him. I have seen him in pictures. He's quite the same. Next, it was a case of hello, goodbye, as Paul McCartney left and the enthusiastic crowd that had waited in the cold began to cheer once more. Next year, the Institute hopes to swell its student ranks to 700 and other similar schools are expected to follow. Yeah, we set the trends here. Now, One of the most important things, of course, the fact he's put in more than a million pounds of his own money, but also the fact that he gave this place his personal seal of approval has helped to raise its profile right across the world. At a press conference earlier, he spoke about his emotions now that the project is finally complete. If I had to choose a word, it would just be pride because I'm proud to have been born in this great city and I'm proud of the people of this city and I know they want it to work. He was also asked what advice he had for Lippa's first students. They're true to themselves and they follow their own voice, and have a passion for it and a love for it and work hard. They'll get there. Of course, getting there isn't easy. It's a very tough business that they've chosen to enter. Mark Featherstone Whitty is the chief executive of Lipper. Mr. Featherstone Whitty, are there enough opportunities out there for all these new talented people you're going to be churning out from Lipper? I think the key thing is Lipper is not more of the same. And one of the things we'll be instilling into our students is that they have to create those opportunities themselves. We expect most of our students, a lot of our students, to go out and create new businesses. It's been said in this city that perhaps by opening this new institution very high profile, you may be taking resources away from existing venues, existing arts facilities. How do you answer those critics? Well, I would say that the vast majority of our money, I was just thinking of something uh, in excess of 12 million pounds we've raised for this, probably only 14 million, sorry, only 14,000 has come from a trust or a foundation in Liverpool. All the rest is new money. But you do have two theatre venues here. Are they going to take revenue audiences away from elsewhere? No, they're very small venues and the likelihood is that when we want to do a big show in a big venue we'll be hiring Liverpool venues in order to do that. Now Paul McCartney spoke at his news conference about the need for this place to appeal to the whole community not to be elitist. How are you going to prevent it from being an elitist institution? We are an elitist institution. We want to have the best possible people here. However I'm glad to say that compared to the other Liverpool higher education institutes we have the highest percentage of Merseyside and Liverpool people in it and if anyone's listening out there if you've got what it takes, we'll admit you. Mark Featherston and Whitty, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. That's about it from Liverpool for now, but do join us again later in the programme when we'll be looking at the students of Lipper at work. For now, though, I'll hand you back to the studio and Merrin. With ...in a whole lot of other areas. Uh, in a word, it's the multi-skilling of not only performers, but those who make performance possible.
As you may imagine, competition for places at Lippa was intense. Four applicants for every vacancy. But students weren't selected purely on the grounds of their academic ability. They were judged on their commitment, originality, enthusiasm and determination to succeed. A taste for vegetarian food also helps. The canteen serves nothing else following a suggestion from Paul and Linda McCartney. But the menu, whilst nutritious, isn't the main reason why students choose Lippa. I play the bass and I'm here just to get um, an opportunity to work with other composers. I want to be a performer, do um, music shows, both as a singer and, act and an actress. Lippa is a really class example of uh, one of the best handouts uh, that could be handed to anyone with any aspirations to going into the arts. Because it's doing community arts and there aren't many other places apart from London that are doing community arts and I didn't want to go to London. Do you want to be a star? Definitely. <laughs> but is star quality something which can be taught in an institution? And surely creativity comes from living life in the real world. Lippa's head of learning, David Price, picked up his skills that way in the pubs and clubs. There is no reason why the skills that you need to be a versatile popular musician, for example, um, cannot be acquired in the same way as the skills that you need to be a classical musician. No one thought it was strange to teach actors in acting schools. Why should it be any different to teach pop musicians in, in colleges? Eventually, there'll be around 700 full-time students at Lippa. Getting a place will no doubt continue to be a tough business. But then, so too, is the business they hope to work in. So it remains to be seen just what will happen to the first batch of students from Lippa. But it's been a memorable day here in Liverpool, not least because of Paul McCartney's appearance. With that, I'll hand you back to Merrin. Oh, he looks bitterly cold, doesn't <laughs> he? Does. Just in case his uh, chauffeur-driven limousine fails to pick him up, Diane, is it going to get any colder for him in Liverpool? I think I can guarantee his chauffeur-driven <laughs> limousine's not going to pick him up. The wind did drop down today, as we did for... But now the Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts is in full swing. Even the leaders of the three main political parties shared a rare gesture of unity in sending messages of support. He hasn't lived in Liverpool for many a year, but to Paul McCartney, it still feels like home. He and a friend called George Harrison were at grammar school together in this building, which has now been transformed into the £15 million Paul McCartney Fame School, otherwise known as the Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts. Paul McCartney first had the idea of turning his old school into his new fame school while performing in Liverpool five years ago. Fellow famous donators include Jane Fonda, Dudley Moore and Eddie Murphy. In McCartney's words, he's paying something back to a city that has done so much for him. We've got a future. For McCartney, the school's official opening was a proud moment. If I had to choose a word, it would just be pride, because I'm proud to have been born in this great city, and I'm proud of the people of this city, and I know they want it to work. 200 students from around the world have already enrolled here. Eventually, there'll be more than 700 taking two to three year courses in all aspects of the performing arts. It's just positiveness in, in the school. So, uh, so it's great being here. The only word you can come up with is, wow, this is really brilliant. We can work it out. <laughs> Paul McCartney will be back in school on a regular basis to teach budding songwriters. Gary Cottrell, Sky News in Liverpool. Performing for us next, the Bottom News Centre in Liverpool. Good evening. An 11-year-old boy to school today. Former Beatle Paul McCartney realised another dream today when his old school was officially reopened for business, show business. He joined 200 students and supporters of the brand new Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts. And Mark Owen was there. It was Beatlemania revisited as Paul McCartney entered his old school gate. The building, which had fallen derelict, sparked McCartney's idea back in the early 80s to build a fame school where students of all ages could learn all about all aspects of the entertainment industry. Students from all over the world and from the Northwest are already studying here. Today was the first time everyone concerned with the building of an institution that's generated worldwide interest had come together. The media were packed into one gallery theatre while the presentation, including a speech from Paul McCartney, went on in a neighbouring auditorium. 
Afterwards, Paul McCartney himself spoke about the project. We're hoping that we've created something different here. The kids themselves are the ones who are going to have the talent. We can't inject them with talent. Next year, the Institute hopes to swell its student ranks to 700, and other similar schools are expected to follow. And uh, that's the news. Uh... Launched a new lease of life for his old school. The Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts was officially opened by its most famous patron. It was a triumphant homecoming for one of Liverpool's most famous sons. Not because fans had turned out to welcome him, but because his dream of opening a fame school had finally become a reality. At a news conference, Paul McCartney had this advice for the first Lipper students. They're true to themselves, and they follow their own voice, and have a passion for it and a love for it, and work hard. They'll get there. 185 students are currently on full-time courses covering everything from performance to show business management. It'll be some years yet though before we see how many of them make the big time. Today where it all began for him to inaugurate a new fame school for performing artists. He's helped to fund it and will do some teaching there too. ITN's Ben McCarthy reports. Reviving memories of the fans that helped to make him famous, Paul McCartney returned to Liverpool today for the inauguration of a school for others who want to follow in his footsteps to stardom. The Institute is on the site of Paul McCartney's old grammar school. Now fully restored, the so-called Fame School offers a degree course in performing arts. Students from all over the world will study music, dance and drama. They'll also be given the technical and managerial skills needed in the entertainment industry. The former Beatle has pumped a million pounds of his own money into the project. It's even received a cash donation from the Queen. Today's ceremony had the kind of showbiz atmosphere the students hope they'll one day enjoy, if they're as fortunate as one of their new tutors. The very best of luck, you will need it. But keep at it, and uh, even though, as Peter said, it was a hard day's night, we can work it out. <laughs> Paul McCartney will soon be back at the school teaching songwriting as part of the curriculum, and he says he might be able to pass on a few tricks of the trade. Ben McCarthy, News at 10, Liverpool. And that's the way the news looks tonight. We Give him our love, my daddy. You've got a pass. Give him our love. 
Give him our love, Mike. Give him our love. Give him our love. Give him our love. <laughs> Listen to this Canadian voice. <laughs> oh, God. God. Come Lift your head up. Where is he? He's the one with the white hair. The white hair, the red oh, oh. and the black. Yeah, he stands up the longish hair. No, it's not. It's no, the one in the camel coat. No, no, it's in the yeah. Yeah, with the colour. The one, oh, the one in front, the one just ahead of me. Yeah. yeah. yeah Eddie thought that was uh, Tony Sheridan, maybe. The, the guy with the white hair, the long white hair. Yeah, I think he's still watching that one. Yeah, he looks like he's still watching that one. Yeah, it's somebody with white hair. Uh, Eddie Porter thought it was Tony Sheridan. He went chasing after him, so he'll help sure me if it was. was. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, can you come? I still don't see him. I mean, I can't really make him. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We saw him come out of Abbey Road one day and just went nuts. I took pictures of anthology material on the back seat of his car. And that was before it came out, you know. I was like, oh, great. Did he, did he go through that way? So yeah. So he never did come through here. That was so way to call. He walked to us. I had my camera like this on the and he looked right at my lens and I was recording. I hope it comes out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to that girl with a long hair in black. Can't get any closer, please move! Oh, why are they standing there? Please!
put him in line for a knighthood. A personal donation from the Queen six years ago had helped Paul McCartney turn his dream of a fame school into a reality. Now Her Majesty had come to Liverpool to see the Institute for herself and the city's favourite son was clearly delighted. <laughs> Paul's wife Linda had planned to help show the royal guest around but we were told she was not feeling up to the occasion. Her Majesty visited the dance studios and music classrooms, with some of the first year's intake of 200 students putting on their own role performance. The Institute is housed in McCartney's old grammar school, and he's kept the same motto, not for ourselves alone, but for the whole world we were born. As the Queen left to tour more of the city, McCartney dismissed reports that he was soon to become Sir Paul in the Queen's birthday honours list. It's too embarrassing to think about, isn't it? Excuse well, is it me. Hey, I've no idea about anything. No, no. You must be proud as punch. I'm very proud, yeah. yeah. It's a fantastic day, you know, the seal of approval and that. And I thought the kids were brilliant. That's the main thing. It's a bit different from assembly when you used to be in there. It's a lot different from assembly, yeah. I was normally getting detention. <laughs> But with today's royal seal of approval, he's now gone to the top of the class. Sue Turton, Sky News, Liverpool. But I wouldn't melt in that man's mouth, would it? Or... New fame school, the £15 million Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts. Patrick Snell joined the royal party. The Queen arrived at the school's Mount Street entrance, watched by dozens of well-wishers. Wearing a powder blue outfit, Her Majesty was greeted by Paul McCartney to begin the guided tour he'd always dreamt of. Once inside, Her Majesty was introduced to students and seemed to relish meeting the young performers. This is indeed a dream come true for Paul McCartney. It's the first time Mac has met the Queen since she watched the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra perform Beatles music at the Albert Hall some 14 years ago. I'm very proud, yeah. yeah. It's a fantastic day, you know, the seal of approval and that. And I thought the kids were brilliant. Her Majesty spent just under an hour at the school before leaving for other engagements on Merseyside. And the Duke of Edinburgh is opening the new Delco Electronics factory in Kirby at the moment. A full Impressed by the students at the Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts. Here's our North of England reporter, Tony Barnes. The Queen's been a long-time supporter of Paul McCartney's fame school. Today, she was given a guided tour of the Liverpool Institute for the Performing Arts by the former Beatles star. They'd last met at a Royal Philharmonic Orchestra performance in London. The music here, though, was quite different. The Institute at Paul's former school teaches all aspects of music, dance and drama, from performance and production to management. Before opening the £15 million school, the Queen saw a stage show by those hopeful of becoming tomorrow's stars. 
Today's opening marks the end of a dream for Paul McCartney. His idea for the Institute was born 15 years ago after the Toxteth riots, and it's only been made possible by grants and private donations, including one from the Queen herself. Paul McCartney said he was thrilled. He'd been due to escort the Queen with his wife Linda, but she'd pulled out at the last minute. Linda's at home. It's a bit hectic, all this for her, yeah. But she's well. She's great. As the Queen left for other engagements, screams echoing Beatlemania rang out. Tony Barnes, ITN, Liverpool. And now back to the top story. Two women bitten by a bat with suspected rabies. He's supported from the start. But the former Beatle has shrugged off suggestions it'll put him in line for a knighthood. A personal donation from the Queen six years ago had helped Paul McCartney turn his dream of a fame school into a reality. Now Her Majesty had come to Liverpool to see the Institute for herself and the city's favourite son was clearly delighted. Her Majesty visited the dance studios and music classrooms. With some of the first year's intake of 200 students putting on their own role performance. The Institute is housed in McCartney's old grammar school and he's kept the same motto, not for ourselves alone but for the whole world we were born. As the Queen left to tour more of the city, McCartney dismissed reports that he was soon to become Sir Paul in the Queen's birthday honours list. Well, it's too embarrassing to think about, isn't it? Excuse well, it me. Hey, I have no idea about anything. Must be proud as Punch. I am very proud. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, fantastic day, you know, the seal of approval and that. And I thought the kids were brilliant. That's the main thing. It's a bit different from assembly when you used to be in there. It's a lot different from assembly, yeah. I was normally getting detention. <laughs> But with today's royal seal of approval, he's now gone to the top of the class. Sue Turton, Sky News, Liverpool. Sir Paul McCartney. And to that meeting between the Queen and the former Beatle. Paul McCartney gave Her Majesty a guided tour of his new Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts, the multi-million pound fame school which is already attracting students from all over the world. Patrick Snell was there too. At 10 o'clock this morning, Her Majesty arrived at the school's Mount Street entrance, watched by dozens of well-wishers. Wearing a powder blue outfit, the Queen was greeted by Paul McCartney to begin the guided tour he'd always dreamt of. His wife Linda pulled out of the engagement. There was a gift of flowers too from five-year-old schoolgirl Sarah rickler Kleiman. Once inside the refurbished site of McCartney's former grammar school, the Queen was introduced to students and seemed to relish meeting the young performers. She saw a dance performance and heard a student band called The Salvation play one of their own numbers. There was also time to witness the impressive master control room and recording studio. This is indeed a dream come true for Paul McCartney. It's the first time Mac has met the Queen since she watched the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra perform Beatles music at the Albert Hall some 14 years ago. Indeed, McCartney's describing this as one of his proudest days ever. I am very proud, yeah. yeah. It's a uh, fantastic day, you know, the seal of approval and that. And I thought the kids were brilliant. Her Majesty spent just under an hour at the school before leaving for other engagements on Merseyside. Great day indeed. And still to come on tonight's programme, we meet the man described by many soccer pundits as the greatest footballer ever. I'm talking about the fantastic... ...as on Merseyside today with Prince Philip. The uh, Queen formally opened uh, Paul McCartney's new Institute for the Performing Arts and uh, Prince Philip toured one of the area's high-tech factories. Police arrested one man who tried to break through a coordinate lipper to present a letter to the Queen. But other than that, it was a trouble-free day, as Pat West reports. On a day which featured a strong musical theme, the Queen arrived at Liverpool's new fame school, Lipper, to be greeted by former Beatle Paul McCartney. After formally opening the Institute, she toured the building and watched a performance by a new generation of musical stars in the making. Paul McCartney was proud. It's a uh, fantastic day, you know, the seal of approval and that. And I thought the kids were brilliant. That's the main thing. The royal couple then linked up at Conway Park in Birkenhead. They were shown the new Europa Pools complex and swapped the Royal Limousine for a bus tour of the area. Next, a concert hall fit for a Queen, Liverpool's recently refurbished Philharmonic Hall. Staff here have devoted the last few days to buffing and shining every last fixture to prepare for the Royal reopening today. She will notice like it, because everyone's made a tremendous effort, right from the, the staff, you know, right down to the cleaners and everybody involved. We're having to sort of try and make it feel special every day, so 
So we, we'd be, um, it'd be, it'd be doing our customers down to say that we don't make such, a, such an effort for them. But there are some things particularly to do with the Queen, to do with a bit of extra plush and a bit of extra security that, that, um, that we have to do. And of course we do a bit of, bit of tarting up of the, of the building itself. After a programme performed by the Merseyside Youth Orchestra, the Queen met performers and one of the hall's longest serving fans. She said about the concert and I said, oh yes, and in this lovely hall. She was pleased it is with the lovely, hall. yes. Oh, she was. While the Queen enjoyed Merseyside's artistic talents, Prince Philip admired the area's industrial achievements and opened the new Delco factory in Kirby at the cutting edge of high-tech car components. By 4pm, the royal couple had left to fly out from Liverpool Airport and Merseyside packed away the red carpets for another day. Pat West, Northwest Tonight, Liverpool. So she won't be staying long enough for Euro 96 in this part of the world. There's a photograph on. Wait, yeah. who's that? How was it? Was it good? It was lovely, yeah. What was it? Did the Queen like it? Yeah, she loved it, yeah. It was good fun, yeah. <laughs> was it like that? Just stick on the dartboard. I think she did enjoy it. Alan. You're all mates. Yeah. That's great. You offered to buy these trousers today. Hey? You offered to buy these trousers. Yeah, yeah. You probably thought <laughs> <laughs> hey, mate, Red shoes, easy. Paul. Thanks very much. See ya. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. See you then. Bye. -bye. See you, mate. Bye -bye. Happy birthday. <laughs>
Now we have the sports put forward by an 18-year-old student who's crazy about the Beatles and today he was at the palace trying to meet his hero. Sir Paul emerged from Buckingham Palace with the top honour, but the ex-Beatle was a lone knight. In his words, today was one of the greatest days of his life, but it was tinged with some sadness as his wife Linda wasn't with him. She's been battling with cancer for more than a year and decided to stay out of the spotlight. Proud to be British, wonderful day, and uh, it's a long way from little terrace in Liverpool. Have you spoken to the other Beatles about this? Yep. They make fun of me, and they call me Your Holiness, but they're, they're, they're having a good time. Are you here alone today? How's Linda getting on? Cause... I'm with three of my kids. She's doing fine, thanks. Yeah, we drew straws. Can we only get three tickets? So we've got, I've got my three youngest kids with me. She's, she's doing well? Yes, yeah, she's doing very well, thanks, yeah. Paul McCartney was last here in 1965 with the rest of the Beatles when they received their MBEs. But for another superstar, it was her first visit. Joan Collins received the OBE for a career spanning more than 40 years. She was at the palace with her son. Oh, it means a lot. It means that I think um, having uh, survived in a very precarious and perilous profession for uh, very many years, that I think that that has been acknowledged in some way. And I think that um, it says a lot uh, and gives a lot of hope to a lot of actors who uh, maybe are out of work right now, like me. <laughs> Sir Paul hasn't got used to the idea of his new title yet, but says he's content just to be plain Paul. Helen Walton, Sky News at Buckingham Palace. Sir Paul emerged from the palace and revealed today was one of the best days of his life. But his wife Linda wasn't there to share the moment. She's been battling with breast cancer for more than a year and decided to keep out of the spotlight. It's a long way from Little Terrace in Liverpool. Have you spoken to the other Beatles about this? Yep. They make fun of me. They call me Your Holiness, but they're, they're, they're having a good time. Are you here alone today? How's Linda getting on? Cause... I'm with three of my kids. She's doing fine, thanks. Yeah, we drew straws. Can we only get three tickets? So we've got, I've got my three youngest kids with me. She's, she's doing well? Yeah, she's doing very well, thanks, yeah. Paul McCartney was last here in 1965 with the rest of the Beatles when they received their MBEs. <laughs> then thousands gathered outside to catch a glimpse of their idols. McCartney was just 22. Now 54, the memories are still vivid. What memories? Well, I just remember the other three, you know. I keep looking over my shoulder expecting to see him. This is the moment in the throne room when Her Majesty the Queen bestowed one of the highest honours on the former Beatle and said, Arise, Sir Paul. It all came about because of this young fan who nominated his favourite Beatle for the knighthood but didn't get chance to speak to him. He's done so much for the good of the world. I mean, not only because of his music, but he tries to do such a lot um, to help animals, to um, help people eat healthily. So. Um, I think it's just a combination of all of it. After 40 years in the business, Joan Collins received an OBE. She asked me what I was doing. Palace. It was, he said, quite a journey after collecting his knighthood from the Queen. His wife Linda wasn't with him, but he said she was recovering well from her battle against cancer. Here's Helen Wright. 32 years after he was last honoured at the palace, Paul McCartney today collected a knighthood from the Queen. His wife Linda, who's been fighting against breast cancer, notably absent from his side. She's doing fine, thanks. Yeah, we drew straws. Can we only get three tickets? So we've got, I've got my three youngest kids with me. Yeah, she's doing very well, thanks. Yeah. Hundreds of fans were waiting at the palace gates for a glimpse of Sir Paul. The scenes reminiscent of the 60s when, with the Beatles, he received an MBE, a memory still fresh in Sir Paul's mind. Well, I just remember the other three, you know. I keep looking over my shoulder expecting to see him. They make fun of me and they call me Your Holiness, but they're, they're, they're having a good time. Today's investiture comes as Paul McCartney celebrates his 40th year in the music business. But to the surprise of some in the entertainment industry, it also comes a year after Beatles mentor Sir George Martin received his knighthood. But Sir Paul said today was a wonderful day, a long way from the little terraced house in Liverpool where it all began. Helen Wright, ITN, Buckingham Palace.
finally enough. Six years after John Lennon handed back an MBE in protest at the Vietnam War, Sir Paul, who had kept his, was honoured today for his services to music. He said it was one of the best days of his life. George Eakin reports. We Beatles, oh yes we do. We don't love anyone as much as you. He's waited long enough for it. It's really a great day for every Beatles fan. <laughs> They'd been waiting from 6am for a glimpse of the rock knight who still says you can call me Paul. Proud to be British, wonderful day and uh, it's a long way from a little terrace in Liverpool. He was asked what Ringo and George made of his new title. They make fun of me, they call me your holiness. In 1965 all four Beatles got MBEs. The story that they smoked cannabis at the palace that day was a joke invented by John Lennon though Sir Paul's knighthood may have been delayed by his own four drugs busts. I just love them to bits. Oh. I've come all the way from Australia to have this. Yes, and I love him and I've met him and he's gorgeous. So the next mission from God is George and Ringo. Yeah, Sir George and Sir Ringo. Sir George and Ringo. So what next? Lord McCartney, perhaps. Sir Paul's fans say, let it be. George Eakin, BBC News. Well, I just remember the other three, you know, I keep looking over my shoulder expecting to see them. They make fun of me, and they call me Your Holiness, but they're, they're, they're having a good time. Today's investiture comes as Paul McCartney celebrates his 40th year in the music business, but to the surprise of some in the entertainment industry, it also comes a year after Beatles mentor Sir George Martin received his knighthood. But for the musician who began performing with John Lennon when he was just 14, it was a proud day. Proud to be British, wonderful day, and uh, it's a long way from a little terrace in Liverpool. Sir Paul, we love you. And the fans hope this will not be Sir Paul's last appointment at the palace. They say one day he should be made Lord McCartney. Helen Wright, News at 10, Buckingham Palace. And just to bring you up to date today, and says it's been one of the best days of his life. He arrived at Buckingham Palace to scenes reminiscent of the Beatlemania of more than 30 years ago. Three of his four children were also there to see him receive his honour from the Queen. Afterwards, 54-year-old Sir Paul left to more applause from fans for a family get-together. It included his wife Linda, who's recovering from cancer and couldn't be at today's presentation. Ritter geschlagen. Der 54-Jährige aus Liverpool darf sich nun Sir Paul nennen. Kreischende Fans umjubelten den sichtlich nervösen Popstar wie in alten Zeiten vor den Toren des Buckingham-Palastes. Die Queen belohnte McCartney mit dem Ritterstand wegen seiner Verdienste um die britische Musikszene. Und nun die Paul McCartney ist geschlagen worden zum Ritter. In London präsentierte er den Orden, den ihm Königin Elisabeth II. verliehen hatte. Wegen seiner Verdienste um die britische Musikszene darf sich McCartney nun Sir Paul nennen. Mit den Beatles hatte er bereits 1965 einen königlichen Orden erhalten. Die Börsendaten? He was knighted by Queen Elizabeth in a ceremony in Buckingham Palace, while fans outside screamed the way they did in the heyday of Beatlemania 30 years ago. McCartney dedicated his knighthood to fellow Beatles George Harrison, Ringo Starr and the late John Lennon and to his home city of Liverpool. Then thousands gathered outside to catch a glimpse of their idols. McCartney was just 22. Now 54, the memories are still vivid. What memories? Well, I just remember the other three, you know. I keep looking over my shoulder expecting to see him. Beatles said it was a huge honour and that he never dreamt he would be receiving a knighthood at Buckingham Palace. It was, said Sir Paul, one of the best days of his life. Also decorated at the Palace Tuesday, actress Joan Collins, best known for her character Alex in television's Dynasty series. She has now become an officer of the Order of the British Empire, O and OBE. And turning now to sports achievements.